Have you ever thought there was a name that all is shown in the military field? Today, we will tell you about one such name that was shining in the world of the military, Hannibal Barca. Hannibal was born in 247 BC in Carthage, an ancient Mediterranean power. Hannibal came from a family with a deep tradition of military leadership. His father, Hamilcar Barca, and his brothers, Mago and Hasdrubal, all contributed to his military heritage. In this video, we embark on a mysterious journey to uncover Hannibal Barca's life and his extraordinary audacious deeds during the Second Punic War, which continue to impress everyone in the world of the military even today. Before we delve into Hannibal's legendary legacy, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Your support means a lot to us and it helps us create more great content, so without further ado, let's get started. Hannibal's story begins with a remarkable childhood oath. When he was just a young boy, around the age of 9 or 10, his father, Hamilcar Barca, took him to a temple. There, Hannibal made a solemn oath, swearing never to be a friend of the Romans. This momentous event in his early life laid the foundation for his enduring hostility towards Rome. Hamilcar Barca Hannibal's father was a prominent Carthaginian general deeply affected by Carthage's defeat in the First Punic War against Rome. Hannibal and his brothers often accompanied their father on military campaigns, learning the art of warfare from a very young age. This early exposure to the harsh realities of conflict coupled with the solemn oath taken at the temple played a pivotal role in shaping Hannibal's destiny as a military leader. It ultimately led to his command in the Second Punic War and his audacious campaign to invade Rome, which included the famous crossing of the Alps with his army and war elephants. Hannibal's unwavering determination to fulfill the oath and his remarkable strategic brilliance and warfare have made him a legendary figure in history. His deep-seated grudge against Rome and his military achievements during the Second Punic War continue to be a subject of fascination and study to this day. Journey to Rome Hannibal's journey to Rome was initiated by his brother-in-law, Hasdrubal the Fair, with the goal of securing Carthaginian interests and building alliances with Celtic tribes in northern Italy. Rome, perceiving the threat, annexed the Po region, Cisalpine Gaul, setting the stage for Hannibal's rise to prominence following Hasdrubal's assassination in 221 BC. The Audacious Crossing In the year 218 BC, the Carthaginian general Hannibal embarked on an epic and audacious journey from Carthagena, Spain, that would forever etch his name into the annals of military history. His mission was to wage war against the Roman Republic, and to do so, he had to traverse some of the most challenging terrain of his time and overcome formidable resistance. Hannibal's path led him through the rugged Pyrenees Mountains, where he and his army faced harsh weather and the relentless resistance of local tribes. From there, they reached the banks of the mighty Rhone River, where they needed to secure boats to transport their forces. The exact route Hannibal took through the Alps remains a matter of debate among historians, but what is certain is that the crossing was a perilous endeavor. As they entered Rome, Hannibal's forces were significantly diminished, their numbers reduced by the harsh conditions and battles along the way. This phase of the journey was fraught with the immense difficulties. Hannibal and his troops had to contend with not only the harsh Alpine climate, but also hostile terrain and the ever-present threat of Roman pursuit. Supplies were scarce and their success seemed uncertain. Yet, Hannibal's indomitable spirit and strategic brilliance shone through. His audacious campaign in Rome, despite all odds, would become a legendary chapter in ancient military history. It was a testament to his unwavering determination and the resilience of his troops, who would go on to achieve remarkable victories against the formidable Roman forces. Hannibal's journey serves as a timeless example of the human spirit's capacity to overcome seemingly unsurmountable challenges in the pursuit of a daring goal. Grand Strategy Hannibal's grand strategy aimed at conquering Rome by opening a northern front and subduing allied city-states on the Italian peninsula. His unconventional approach was influenced by historical events, including the Carthage's defeat in the First Punic War. Early Victories 
Hannibal's audacious crossing of the Alps disrupted Rome's initial strategy, leading to a clash with Roman forces at the Battle of Ticinus. While a minor victory, it rallied the Gauls and Ligurians to his side, and Scipio retreated across the Trabia River. Hannibal's tactical brilliance became evident at the Battle of the Trabia in December of the same year. Through clever maneuvers and a devastating surprise attack, he wore down the superior Roman infantry and secured a decisive victory, marking a turning point in the Second Punic War. Enduring Tactics and Escapes In 217 BC, Hannibal, concerned about assassination attempts by his Gallic allies, adopted a clever disguise by frequently changing wigs. Seeking a stable base in southern Italy, he aimed for the Ardo, a challenging route due to marshy terrain and river crossings. His strategy was to provoke Roman consul Gaius Fulminius by devastating the region he defended, eventually luring him into battle near Lake Trasimene. In the subsequent ambush, Hannibal inflicted a severe defeat on the Romans. Fabian's Strategy Recognizing the need for siege engines to attack Rome directly, Hannibal chose to march through central and southern Rome, encouraging revolt against Rome. Roman dictator Quintus Fabius Maximus employed a defensive strategy, avoiding open battle. While Hannibal ravaged Apulia, Fabius refused to engage in battle. Hannibal attempted to march to Campania, but Fabius blocked the exits, leading to the night battle of Agar Falernus. Hannibal's clever ruse involving torch-lit cattle allowed his army to escape silently while Roman forces pursued the decoy. Hannibal's escape showcased his masterful generalship, and his army remained intact. The Battle of Cannae In 216 BC, Hannibal seized the supply depot at Cannae, positioning himself between the Romans and their supplies. The Romans, with a massive army of 50,000 to 80,000, encamped near the Ophidus River under the alternating consuls the Gaius Terentius Vero, in charge on the day of battle. Hannibal, knowing Vero's recklessness, baited the Romans into an envelopment tactic, nullifying their numerical advantage and leading them into a trap. Hannibal's superior cavalry resulted in a devastating Roman defeat, with over 50,000 to 70,000 Romans killed or captured, including the consul. Roman Strategy Shift The Roman loss at Cannae made them adopt a more cautious approach, avoiding pitched battles. Hannibal, despite his brilliance, couldn't capitalize on the victory to attack Rome due to a lack of support from Carthage. Instead, he secured alliances and territorial gains in Italy, weakening Roman control. Regions like Capua defected to his side, causing a ripple effect across Italy and beyond. Today, we unveil a creation that transcends time, bringing history and artistry into your very hands. Introducing Spectre's first exclusive 2 ounces silver coin from the Masters of War series, Hannibal. The legendary Carthaginian general was celebrated for his daring and audacious journey across the treacherous Alps with war elephants, challenging the mighty Rome during the Second Punic War. His legacy, etched in history and symbolized by his lost eye, is a testament to his sacrifices, the pinnacle of Carthaginian resistance and the epitome of strategic brilliance in warfare. From treacherous Alps crossings to epic battles, a commander, an enemy, a legacy, all captured in the palm of your hand. History waits for no one. Secure your piece of it today. Pre-order now at www.spectres.io. Delmate in Italy In Italy, the conflict between Rome and Hannibal reached a strategic impasse. Following the teachings of Fabius Maximus, the Romans adopted an attritional strategy, avoiding large-scale battles and instead using multiple smaller armies to wear down Hannibal's forces and morale. Over the next few years, Hannibal resorted to scorched earth tactics and struggled to sustain his operations in southern Italy. His situation deteriorated as his support diminished. Carthage failed to provide reinforcements, and Rome's superior resources took a toll. Despite achieving notable victories, Hannibal couldn't secure a decisive lasting advantage 
Due to the conflicting factions within the Carthaginian oligarchy and their lack of support. The Decline in Italy In 212 BC, Hannibal's surprise capture of Tarentum marked a brief success, but he couldn't establish control of its crucial harbor. However, the overall tide of the conflict was gradually shifting in favor of Rome. Roman consuls initiated a siege of Capua later that same year, and while Hannibal managed to temporarily lift the siege, the city eventually fell to the Romans. His attempts to break the siege and the unsuccessful march on Rome in 211 BC aimed at forcing the recall of Roman armies didn't yield the results he had hoped for. The decline continues. While Hannibal continued to demonstrate his tactical brilliance in battle, securing victories at the Battle of the Silurus and the First Battle of Herdonia, the loss of Tarentum in 209 BC and the gradual Roman reconquest of territories in southern Italy began to erode his control over the region. Additionally, in 207 BC, he intended to coordinate a march on Rome with his brother Hasdrubal, but received news of his brother's defeat and death at the Battle of the Mataiurus, prompting his retreat to Calabria. This marked a turning point as it signaled the end of Hannibal's significant successes in Italy. Return to Carthage With Carthage's military fortunes declining and Rome gaining the upper hand, Hannibal was recalled to defend Carthage against a Roman invasion led by Scipio Africanus in 203 BC. These events marked the conclusion of Hannibal's remarkable campaign in Italy as he shifted his focus to the defense of his homeland. The Battle of Zama In 203 BC, at Carthage's behest, Hannibal left Italy and returned to Africa. His return bolstered the war faction in Carthage, which put him in command of a combined force comprising African conscripts and the Italian mercenaries he had brought with him. In 202 BC, Hannibal engaged in peace negotiations with Scipio, but they faltered due to Roman acquisitions of Punic faith related to Carthaginian breaches of protocols ending the First Punic War. Carthage and Rome had reached an earlier agreement, but it fell apart due to Carthaginian actions, setting the stage for the decisive Battle of Zama. The Final Battle At the Battle of Zama, the Romans held a rare advantage in cavalry, partly due to Massinissa's betrayal, who switched allegiance from the Carthage to Rome. Despite Hannibal's mental and physical exhaustion, Carthage had numerical superiority and more elephants. However, Roman tactics countered the elephants, and Scipio's rallying of the troops led to the collapse of the Carthaginian formation. Carthage surrendered, and the defeat marked the end of its quest for Mediterranean dominance. The Romans suffered minimal casualties compared to Carthage. Post-war years After the Second Punic War, Hannibal became Carthage's chief magistrate and initiated financial reforms to combat corruption. However, these reforms alienated some factions. Seven years later, Rome accused him of aiding their enemy, Antiochus III, and fearing for his life, Hannibal went into voluntary exile. Continued Struggles he advised Antiochus III on war with Rome in Ephesus. Later, he received a military command from Antiochus in 190 BC but faced difficulties in building a fleet and was defeated in battle. Rome's decisive victory over Antiochus at the Battle of Magnesia prompted a truce, which required Antiochus to surrender Hannibal and other enemies to Rome in 189 BC. Seeking Sanctuary Hannibal found refuge in the Armenian court, fled to Crete, and then sought sanctuary with Priscius I of Bithynia. He assisted Priscius in conflict with Rome's ally Eumenes II of Pergamon, using cunning tactics. Uncertain End The details surrounding Hannibal's death remain unclear. Some accounts suggest a fever caused by a finger wound, while others claim he took poison to avoid capture. His tomb was believed to be in Libisa, and the exact year of his death varies in different accounts. Polybius recorded it as 182 BC, the closest to the event. Legacy Hannibal is celebrated as one of history's exceptional military strategists and tacticians. 
His tactical brilliance, including the double envelopment at Cannae, is widely admired. He led a diverse army for 15 years in hostile territory without mutiny, showcasing his leadership skills. Despite limited support from Carthage and biased Roman accounts, Hannibal's campaigns, especially the Battle of Cannae, are studied in military academies worldwide. Influence on Military Thought his supreme leadership and the ability to unite Dower's troops without conspiracies or desertions illustrate his exceptional qualities as a military leader. Leaders like Juan Schlieffen, Patton, and Schwarzkopf drew inspiration from his tactics and principles. Hannibal's legacy endures, and his concepts in logistics, strategy, and maneuver warfare continue to influence modern military thought. Military Historians Praise Military historian Theodore Erol Dodge praised Hannibal's mastery of logistics and strategy, noting that he revolutionized the art of war by emphasizing strategic maneuvers, attacks on supply lines, and occupation of strategic positions, concepts that shaped military strategy for generations. In closing, Hannibal Barca's journey, marked by audacity, brilliance, and indomitable spirit, stands as a testament to human ingenuity and strategic genius. His conquest, particularly during the Second Punic War, have etched his name into the annals of military history. His audacious crossing of the Alps, tactical master strokes on the battlefield, and unwavering leadership have left an indelible mark. His legacy endures, serving as a timeless source of inspiration for military leaders and strategists across the ages. Hannibal Barca will forever be celebrated as one of history's most exceptional military commanders, a shining example of what can be achieved through innovation, determination, and unwavering resolve. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.